Welcome to Whole and Unleashed, a podcast about coming home to ourselves. I'm your host, Jessica Locke, a holistic mindset, strala yoga, and human design guide. This podcast is not about telling you what to do. It's about sharing stories and tools to connect to your inner wisdom and maybe give you an extra nudge towards living wholeheartedly. Because deep down, only you know what's best for you. We'll be talking mindset, business, recovering from burnout, human design, transitions, and so much more. Let's dive in, shall we? Hello, hello. Hi, friends. Welcome to the new season of Whole and Unleashed. So it's been a while. What started as a pause a week or two in the fall of last year, which is 2021, (laughs) ended up being a lot longer than expected. More than five months, actually. And I mean, a lot has happened and this is kind of life, right? A lot is happening all the time. And I felt terrible because I had recorded a couple of episodes with a few guests from last year and they must be wondering what happened to their episodes. I kept saying they're coming soon, but the truth is there wasn't any energy going towards that direction. Even though I really wanted to keep going, the energy that was present didn't want to be expressed that way. And instead, it was more an energy of going inwards, a time of slowing down, reflecting, which was pretty much aligned with the season of winter, a time of hibernating and slowing down, pause and retreat. And I've shared a lot about honoring our seasons in the past, so it was definitely time to walk that talk. Only now, I'm noticing the energy to emerge of wanting to externalize, of things starting to sparkle again, if that makes any sense. And it's been interesting because there were so many indications around me that was signaling me, showing me that it's time to pour energy back into this specific container again. So now being, as I'm recording this episode, towards, I guess, spring, summer. And like many of the people I've been talking around, I guess it's more ready to show up, to be seen. I guess it's been calibrated (laughs) to the season. And it's really helped me to notice my own seasons and my own cycles, which is our main topic for today. So dear listener, how do you honor your seasons and cycles? Because we're not meant to be on all the time. We need space to digest and integrate all the lessons we learn in between the happening. Allow ourselves to recalibrate. That's where we heal, decompress before the next expansion, the next cycle, the next start. Because there's magic in the pause. And even when we feel like nothing is happening, a lot is going on behind the scenes and internally. And as long as we're intentional about how we are, how we're showing up, so that we can really make space to notice where we're being pulled towards, what direction is that leading us to, not direction that we think we have to be going sensitizing to those little shifts in energy is what makes all the difference. And the truth of the matter is that it's not necessarily easy to surrender to that pause when you're being called to it, even when there are a lot of indications that it's time for you to rest, rather that is, you know, your body feeling more tired than usual, sleeping in, low energy, or just not being able to focus. And It really makes me notice, at least within myself, how heavily conditioned we are to show up, to be productive all the time, to be busy. Even trying to find ways to be productive during a vacation or whenever we get a day off, you know, how to get all our chores done, all the to-dos we weren't able to do during the weekday. And you know what? No one is productive all the time. If anybody says so, it's a red flag. 
or maybe their body can sustain it for births at a time. But the factors for the majority of us is that it's not realistic. It's not sustainable to be always on. In fact, I'm over productivity hacks, whatever we want to call them, biohacking, whatever that is. I'm here for support, not in a way of forcing us to override our inner knowing, though. And it, you know, it's perhaps due to my own burnout in the past, seeing people around me going through something similar, trying to balance it all, struggling to catch up, and then feeling inadequate because no matter how many hacks, how many hours of sleep we try to get, how many green juices we try to drink, we're exhausted. And it's almost like we're in this hamster wheel, all of us. And yeah, maybe social media doesn't help sometimes since we keep seeing everybody's highlight reels. Look, don't get me wrong. I don't mind tools that can support you in taking care of yourself, like eating food that is nourishing or tips that can help us focus better. What I am against is the idea that we can hack our way into maximizing our body's energies and being completely on all the time, even when it's signaling us to rest. How no, <laughs> that's where it's not quite sitting well with me. We're not meant to be productive all the time. If you're procrastinating or noticing a lot of resistance to do something, it's either your body's cue or a sign. There might be something deeper underneath. If your body is feeling exhausted, sick, yet you're doing quote, quote unquote, all the right things, then perhaps it's not the right things for you right now. Is the expectation to accomplish, to succeed, overriding what your body and mind needs? Let me repeat this. Is the expectation, the pressure to accomplish, to succeed, overriding what your body and mind needs? After all, like this quote by Alan Sonder, life is what happens to you while you're busy making other plans. We're so busy plotting, anticipating, trying to solve this and that, that sometimes, me included, we miss the present. We miss what's in front of us. We miss our internal wisdom, our inner clues about what we need in this moment. So if you're noticing a disconnect between your body's cues to rest, to slow down and a pressure you know, some guilt to work, to keep pushing, perhaps to bring, to meet ends meet. It's time to evaluate the stories that are underneath. This is where mindset and limited belief comes into play. What happens when you give yourself the space to pause? What feelings come up? Do you feel at ease about it or do you feel anxious? And do you notice that feeling in your body? If it's an anxiety, where does it start? Where does it concentrate? If it's ease, if there's a softness, how does that feel? It's just right now sensitizing to our inner cues. And I used to feel quite anxious whenever I had a day off because that meant I didn't have to do any work at all. I could do anything I wanted to do instead. And there were a million of things in my to-do list. So I can do a few, right? Well, that added to the anxiety, the pressure, the doing, everything, trying to squeeze all that into the moment and also noticing I just wanted to do nothing. <laughs> it's almost like my mind and my body were not in sync. But even if I made space to intentionally rest, I couldn't because my mind was like on high alert and trying to sort through all the things I had to do. Are you seeing this loop here? This never ending cycle of being too exhausted to do anything, but also having too much to do that I couldn't rest. I didn't have space to be. And I felt more anxious going from a thousand miles per hour to suddenly stopping. What is the deal with that? I know a lot of you can relate. Well, after a lot of observation and going through the cycles, I realized that my body, my nervous system, got so used 
and kind of like addicted to being productive, the delusion of productivity and adding a bit of human design knowledge here as a projector with no sacral, I was addicted to that sacral life force energy of getting things done. And with the undefined root too, I was like amplifying all those pulses around me. I have a lot of fuel gates coming out of my root center. It's undefined. So whenever I do amplify in it, those fuel gates get like extra energy blasting through. And, you know, the combo between an undefined sacral and undefined root took me a while to figure out that just because I amplify all that energy, that I can feel it in my body, that I can physically feel the pressure to do, it doesn't mean that I have to act on it if the rest of my energies are not aligned. You know, you hear about strategy and authority when we use the human design language. And that's a perfect example of my splenic authority that was so quiet because my mind and all the undefined open centers were amplifying all that energy and I wanted to get rid of the pressure, which is the not self of the root. And I was so addicted to the sacral of like doing and getting things done that I couldn't tune in to my inner wisdom. My inner wisdom and my body was like, hey, slow down. But there was so much fear that was coming out. Now, in my case, with this whole situation, the story I was telling myself was that my worth comes from my productivity. It comes from my capacity to check off lists, to be reachable, because the more I do, the more worthy I am. I get to prove my worth by doing and accomplishing. And do you see how exhausting that is to feel like you need to constantly prove yourself that if you stop, everything, everyone else will stop around you? That our enoughness doesn't come from being, it comes from doing. And I've talked to so many people that felt very similar. No wonder so many people have trouble resting and take a break because of all these stories that have been conditioned to us and they lay right in our subconscious. And some of the fears that came up was that I'm not enough. Fear of not knowing who I was. What is my identity if I'm not the person who is accomplishing? If I'm not the per, um, if I'm not the people pleaser, what would happen if I stop? There was also fear of the silence, the stillness, the empty space. I think I was afraid to hear. I didn't know what to do with myself. And, you know, to access that inner knowing deep down, I just didn't want to face it. There was also the fear of losing momentum and as a result, losing it all, right? <laughs> Maybe I should make another podcast episode about momentum, actually. But for today, let's look back at what is there to lose when we stop? Or at least that's the question I ask myself. What is there to lose? If I slow down right now, well, perhaps it's my splenic voice, my inner intuition. What came back was my mental and physical health. We're paying a hefty price. My sleep, my ability to be present, my joy, my free time. My time with the people I love. And of course, it took me such a long time journey to truly see that because when you're in the moment when you're going through these motions when you're untangling from all of that the deconditioning the limiting beliefs the story we don't see it we're on survival mode we get so focused on all the other things we have to do that we have our blinders on And yes, there's a lot of things that we can, we need to, and we are deconditioning from. And then there's also the stories that we hold of certain ideals that also keep us stuck sometimes. 
for me, it was also the idea or my perception of rest being something that had to be earned. That in order to rest, I should have pushed myself, I should have worked, I should have done something to deserve it. And if I rest now, then I'll have more to do later. So I'll never be able to catch up. And if I'm resting now, before I accomplish or check any things off my list, I'm being lazy. Because I'm not doing all the things that I should be doing. And then you see how the guilt comes from that? The shame, the enoughness or lack of. And if I slow down, that means I will always be behind. And you see all these stories that are playing out right now in front of you? None of these are true, but I feel it. I feel it in me. It's part of my programming. Those are fears. Those are the limiting beliefs that I was holding on to. And I notice a lot of my clients feel the same way, the same pressure, because it's been programmed into all of us from a very, very young age, especially if you're a woman as well. You feel the pressure to have to work, to take care of your family, to have to, you know, reach certain milestones by a certain age. It's like three times as hard as men just to be half recognized. So do you see how these limiting stories, these beliefs, and the things we tell ourselves are very similar? It's similar themes. Going around in circles, showing up in different places and situations in our life. But it's the same thread. You know... In this case, about enoughness, worthiness, proving, rest. So I really had to take a step back, interrupt that narrative, and soothe my nervous system. Which took a lot of time, patience, and practice. It took a village to nourish my body, mind, and spirit back to health. There was a lot of trial and error as I leaned into my fears, open up to healing. Healing with the idea that even if I don't heal... Nothing is wrong with me. That even if I don't heal, even if I am still sick, my body is still out of balance, nothing is wrong with me. It's just my body trying to cope and come back to itself. And that is another big one because sometimes we can get trapped in this healing circle where we feel like it's a forever process, where we feel like we have to compensate Or we feel like this is the only way because we went from coping that it becomes part of our habit to be in like a survival mode. You know, that is something else that I had to untangle. So yeah, a lot of it was open up. A lot of limited stories being untangled that I had around productivity, rest. Or basically, in human design language, it's also known as the process of deconditioning. (laughs) And about understanding the mechanics of my own personal human design, of how my energy works. And in scientific terms, is we're wiring your thought patterns. Because I've been doing this for the past five years, and I cannot believe how much time has gone by already. I'm more sensitized to my energetic ebbs and flows. I'm able to notice the fluctuations in my energy, more in tune with my seasons, learning, to detach from my outer expectations, you know, the external shoulds from others, really quieting all that noise down because if it's not aligned to us, if it's not serving us, it is essentially noise. Because now the focus wasn't about nourishing my body back to health. I'm in a stage where I can sustain where I'm at. This is the place where I'm able to listen and honor to my needs, where I'm no longer trying to heal or trying to catch up with my body and mind. They're in sync right now. They're friends. (laughs) And one of the things I did is, you know, to keep that going, to keep that, that frequency per se, where I'm like, okay, yes, I can do things to make me healthier, but, you know, a night with not sleeping will not send me off the edge because I'm past 
the healing stage. I'm at the sustaining page. It was to intentionally keep creating space for myself and not to fix, diagnose, or do anything specific. Space to simply be and breathe. Space to observe. What am I holding right now? What's coming to my mind? You know, seeing your thoughts come and go in meditation without really latching onto any of them and tuning into my body, you know, lingering in moments of pleasure, surrendering to how I feel in this moment instead of trying to, you know, jump towards the present or all the things I have to do instead of being here. Really enjoying the ordinary little things. And you know how sometimes I'm going to use the example of a yoga session. We're here. We're in this blissful spot where you've moved your body. You feel like you've opened up. You've moved some energy that's been stuck for a while. You feel a little bit of flow happening. You know, that sweet in-between time where you're taking a deep breath. And you're settling in the present moment. And you're creating that space for ourselves. How can we create the same magic in our every day, every moment we get to? Because these little things, these little practices help us come back to our center. It anchors us in the present to our bodies. No matter what we're going through, maybe we are grieving and it feels very overwhelming to stay in our body we want to be distracted maybe we're stressed out we want some distraction we want some joy to help us forget about what we're experiencing now right but how can you soften be with all these emotions all the stress that you're holding and still feel safe in your body so feel safe in the present So if you were to create some space for yourself in your days, what would that something be? How can you add a little practice, a little routine in your daily rituals? Maybe a quick stroll around the park. Maybe it's a meditation practice. Cooking your favorite dish. Talking to a friend. Going to therapy, that can be incredibly supportive as well. Working out. How can you tune into what your body needs right now? And how can you honor that? How can you align with the intention to nourish yourself? And it doesn't have to be long. Maybe start with a few minutes a day. And eventually building a practice around it where you feel a little bit more at ease, where you're able to kind of deconstruct some of the stories or limiting beliefs, guilt that's coming up, anything that you're feeling when you're first starting to slow down. You know, and get yourself more used to feeling safe in the present, safe in the not doing. And it's really about creating opportunities to ground yourself no matter what happens because like i said at the beginning the beauty of life is that it's unpredictable and shit will hit the fan to put it bluntly (laughs) and this is a lesson that i come back and back to because it helps me anchor to myself and a ritual that helps me come back to myself personally has been the Aligned and Embodied Journal. I'm not sure if I've talked about this in the podcast before, but it's essentially a 90-day prompted journal where I check in with myself every morning and night, sometimes in the afternoon. And it's about holding the space to process for myself, a space to integrate whatever I'm holding, whatever that has been coming up as I move towards a certain goal or a certain way of being, or even moving away from a goal. Because in the sweet recalibration process, sometimes when we really check in with ourselves, we notice that what we initially wanted might change. 
And that's okay. It's about giving myself enough grace and compassion about embracing my realizations and embracing the change. And to honor that energy, it's not so much about like, how much can I get done? It's more about how am I every step along the way so that I can connect and strengthen, strengthen that inner connection to my inner knowing, my inner wisdom. It's been really grounding for me and I've gotten so many wonderful, beautiful messages from people all around the world that have been using this journal. And a new edition is coming out with some variations. Also add on supplementary versions that you can include after the first 90 days so you don't have to complete everything at the beginning again that the first journal gives you. And if you want to find out more, go to wholeandunleashed.com. Click on the online and embody journal section. Because when you have space to observe, rather it's through journaling, talking to someone, going for a walk, whatever gives you that space to have a breather, grounding you in a moment is an opportunity to observe before you react so that you're capable to tune in to that inner voice. as opposed to just being reactive and lashing out to everything that's happening around you, things that you can control or you can't. It's a way of honoring your own energy and your guidance because you're always being guided. We just don't notice that when we're, you know, deep into our blind spots, deep into survival mode. It's the microseconds of how we react to things, of the stories we're telling ourselves as we're reacting. That could change everything. That could take us from a line to perhaps away from our centers. And it happens. There's a lot of things that can pull out of us, um, can pull us out of our centers all the time. The important thing is, how do we come back? It's the interactions you have with a stranger when they cut you off, when you're stuck in traffic, when something doesn't go your way. What comes up when you're in those situations? What emotions, stories, and fears? What am I holding? And then having the space to process those things can be incredibly helpful. And to bring this full circle, (laughs) now that I'm noticing my energy of wanting to emerge, to take up space, to start things or finish things again, to externalize, I'm also met with so many synchronicities and opportunities around me that's telling me this is where your attention should go. Versus giving you an example of in the winter how everything was slowing down. Even my business was slowing down. And the story that was coming up for me was that, hey, nobody wants to book with you. That's it. They've had enough. And it's been a few times where I noticed that coming up. There was guilt as well. And then I started doubting, oh, my business is not flowing as much because I'm not able to show up as much. But the reality is that I was pretty exhausted. I was doing a lot. If more sessions were booked, I probably would have been burnt out. I didn't realize how tired I was. All I was seeing was that, oh, my business is not getting as much traction all of a sudden. Because there's also an illusion in business that you're always on, that things are always growing, you're getting more clients, you're making more money, you know, all that. Again, I realize it's not realistic, at least not for me, not for how I function. So why wouldn't my business be a reflection of myself? It would also reflect the season I'm in. And it's been so validating because surrendering to that pause giving myself the space to enjoy life, to do the things that I really find passion and joy in when I'm not trying to prove myself. I've seen a lot of invitations come up and opportunities. And it's, you know, further validating the idea that it's okay to rest. And now in the last couple of months, there's been this surge of energy that is being poured into my offerings and business and not just from myself. If anything, I haven't done anything different. It it seems like people are also emerging from, you know, their hibernations. They're also looking to be guided. They're looking to learn more from me. I'm able to 
align my business to me and find success in a way that is uniquely aligned to me. It's almost like everything I do put out there becomes more magnetic when I do have the energy, when I trust in the in-betweens, in the slowing down, when I'm able to nourish myself. Then my capacity to show up and guide becomes that much more powerful because that's something that is not happening all the time. And I'm not about pretending to be perfect or to be lit. That's not what I am here to aim for. It would be a lie. It wouldn't be sustainable for me. So really learning to honor myself, to guide from that place of honoring my energetics and how I'm showing up, even noticing the pressure and the feeling of doing that, but not letting it drive my decisions has been you know, so much weight off my shoulders and seeing how when it is time, when there is energy, things do work the way, quote unquote, it's supposed to. So I hope today's episode is an invitation for you to pause, to tune into yourself. Notice what season you're in. What is your personal cycle? What is the collective cycle right now? Because everyone's seasons and cycles are different, similar, but also different, even when there's a collective theme. We all have personal cycles. How can you surrender to yours? How can you create space to listen to your inner compass, to sensitize to your body's needs? Because our bodies are always communicating to us. And in what ways can you align both your mind and body? And remember that the more you practice, the easier it'll become. It might be hard at first because you're not used to sensitizing to all those energies within you, all those things that you've amplified versus what's yours. It'll become easier to honor your needs as they come and respond to whatever comes up your way. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you're ready for this new season. I'm excited to share more expansion sessions as well. And yeah, be back soon with more episodes. Thank you so much for listening to the Whole and Unleashed podcast. If you're feeling pulled to get into action and want to connect within, check out the Aligned and Embody journal on wholeandunleashed.com. You'll also find resources on mindset, human design, and archive for past episodes of this podcast. And if you've enjoyed this episode, please share, leave a comment or review on iTunes and Spotify. Thank you so much for tuning in and have a wonderful day wherever you are.